Part of the first wave of dancehall artists, Frankie Paul was often referred to as the Jamaican Stevie Wonder. Not so much because of his visual impairment, but more because of his vocal range. Tidal wave the tidal wave. Frankie Paul, he never get paid. At the time of his coming, dancehall as a genre had just broken into the Jamaican mainstream. I know the scores. And by the mid-1980s, Paul was one of the most prolific hit makers, positing tracks like this. I don't smoke cigarettes, got it will stop I breath. Affectionately called Frankie Dancehall Paul, he was one of the most touring artists in the world and was still a big favorite of reggae fans everywhere up to the time of his passing. Frankie Paul succumbed to kidney failure at the University Hospital of the West Indies in Kingston, Jamaica. We are joined now by Earl Chinna Smith, a mentor and producer of Paul, and Copeland Forbes, former personal manager. Right now, right here on our stage, remembering Frankie Paul. Chinna, welcome, sir. So good to have you. Kopi, Chinna, um, your your um, recall of Frankie Paul, the boy. We have this record company, I Times Record, and um, some brethren, I think from Trenchdown, yeah, Dini, I think his name, and the next brethren bring this artist downtown. Mm -hmm. But the unique thing about him is like some members are still up on the waterfront and them go outside there and them just start singing, and it's just a crowd of people. You know? Mm -hmm. And you watch the suit everywhere I'm going, it's just like, you understand, you know? And then when him sing, him sing this song, him sing like every song, it's like him could sing the top ten and do it just the same way, like the original. Mm -hmm. So my brethren, Mr. Brown, which was a part of the High Times record, so we all record this brethren. You, know? you understand? So Karen to Tough Gang, we record his first song. Right at the time we was releasing Muta album, check it. So we dress him up, we buy him a suit and him, we did like one of the first album launch at the Washana and Frankie just mash up the place. Mm. You know what I mean? So we signed him as an artist, you know what I mean? Kind of see what I would say, great future for him. But you know, music business where some man say, yes, so you have this bad artist, some brethren from, I think it was Jamie's brother, come in and move him. And we have him on a contract, but you know, Frankie, we don't have no money, so we can't sue him. So it's from them just start drift, you know. But the fact that he's so talented, we know some great things that are really happened to him. So he yeah. was under your mentorship and yeah. management right. for how long? Years. Two or mm -hmm. three years, I saw. Two or yeah. three years. Yeah. Up to about the mid eighties. Yeah, I mean but I mean he moved from early because, you know what I mean, you know, most of these artists them anxiety, mm -hmm. them just want Ray Ray. And we as you know what I mean, Ella's another thing. We realize, so yes man, you, you need to Focus more, you know, mm -hmm. rather than just run off. Because it will come, but it won't come in. You know what I mean? On a level where you can balance the thing. But you were, you were still mentoring him even yeah, yeah. after the contract? Yeah, yeah. Was yeah, still breached. Come yeah. He still come around by the store and jam all the time. Yeah. So he came from where? From where? Right. where um, um, Pienland, originally. Pienland? Yeah. yeah. And then tried to go up to like Trenchtown, and then after a while he was at Lizard Town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But just ghetto movements, uh, like so a star in the ghetto. You a, know? a star in the ghetto, but yeah. he was blind, wasn't he? No, not partially. really blind. Yeah, partially. yeah, yeah. He partially. was partially. Yeah. Mm. The Dennis Brown sound alike. Some, mm. some. I mean, Dennis was the most imitated artist in Jamaica's music at All that right. time. So, yeah. So we would get them. People want to hear him sing, but Dennis, as a popular artist, would have most of his tune them. A so recording, well-established right. artist. So you know what I mean? You would have to sing a Westbound Train. You yes. know what I mean? You would have to sing a. You know what I mean? Name a couple more of them than the song there, you know? Yeah. You know, and then it's the same with, um, with the R&B thing them. Mm -hmm. With the first singer, you know what I mean? I just want so all of them pop song within that. He could yeah. deliver them with great ease. Mad, mad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Typically, when artists sound like artists, there's yeah. a, a little bit of a, a little tension. Was there any tension between Dennis and, 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 and Frankie? About no, one the sound? time. One time I hear that. One time, Frankie damaged him in England. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mad. 
You understand? Who is it? <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I was. I want to bring in Copeland <laughs> yeah. on that particular yeah. performance. Yeah. You were there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you were there. In, uh, that was when 1989. I, in the I think 80s. it was. Yes, in the 80s. 80s. It was fresh on the scene. Mm -hmm. This was the line. first time I see the line around the Brixton Academy go around about four times or five times. Yes. And this was this coming of this new prince, you know, who is talented. He has the voice. He can imitate, and he was the greatest at Libra. First appearance in the UK. Yeah. Okay. And believe you me, I mean Dennis. So you you were by then managing him. No, no, uh, uh, no, Dennis. You were managing Dennis. At yeah, that time. right. Okay. I was managing Dennis, working with Dennis, then mm -hmm. I'm doing his tours. You know, and I knew when Frankie was going around to Chinaka, my mother lived just down the road from where Soul Singing, that place is very, very worse. So, uh, but I didn't do much about him because, you know, I lived in the state. So, when this you come on the scene, well dressed, in a suit, and when you say, ow, the place turn over. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, because I looked at the video, right? That video, that particular video we're talking about, he was introduced yeah. by Dennis Brown, no exactly. other than Dennis Brown on yeah. stage. My brother, your brother, Frankie Paul. You see how Dennis was enjoying himself that night. That yes. he even came back on stage with him and joined him yes. singing, jumping, and doing yes. everything. Yeah, you know. So everybody started to boy, this guy is a trick to the crown prince. No, my yeah. crown prince was wounded, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Naturally, the talk was, uh, was like that in London. I fix him and fix it at sunsplash. Yes, yes. We can talk about the fix, yes. but yeah. So subsequently, yeah. They, uh, they both appeared at Sunsplash right. yeah. in Jamaica. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you okay. understand? Nobody told because Dennis lived in England yeah. at the time. And came home for Sunsplash. Well, he come home to fix it because he couldn't fix it in England. He might have to fix it in Jamaica. <laughs> he said, come home. Come back here. <laughs> that's, that's all part. I tell you. So, Chino, how did he get the name Dance All Paul? How did it become part of his, his name? For example, you could just take any rhythm and play it. And I'm seeing any tune on it. Mm. And it sounds like the rhythm make for that song. It wasn't he one of those who, who, who actually went on rhythms in the dance, in the live dance, yeah, sound yeah. system I'm dance? Chill about. That means yeah. to take a big tune, take a, a Nat King Cole song, and just run like a, you know what I mean? One of them, one of them top rhythm, name a couple of them. You know, give me the answer rhythm then. Yeah. Da, da, da. And I'm going to sing that. Any classic song you love, I'm going to play a rhythm on him, that creative. And yeah. Copeland, you managed, you started managing him when? In the 90s. In the 90s? But I, yeah, because I started a reggae, a reggae tour named Reggae Superfest. Mm. That started out with um, um, Dennis Brown, Freddie McGregor, and Stitchy. And then when I went to Europe now, I had Dennis Brown, Beris Amman, Andrew Tosh, and Frankie Paul. Mm -hmm. You know? And that's where I really saw his talent. This guy is so talented. He plays about 10 instruments. I mean, you were in Japan with us, 2002. Yes. And you saw it yourself. You oh, know? yes. And it was unbelievable. Same you know? thing like with recording. You just call him, and I'm just, he's a man who put on the background voice before him. Yes. Mm -hmm. You understand? One track of this, and him just stack it up, and just stack it up, and him finish. Yeah, yeah stack it with background yeah. voices. He take out the music out and yeah. it's just like an orchestra. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just voices. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah. just a yeah. big voice that yeah. nobody can walk right. around. Yeah, and him a fierce speech because he can go up there too. Yeah, he can, he can go, go up there. there and him go up there. He has the greatest yeah. baritone pitch. He can go any range. Very talented in that you era. You song, One in a Million? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he started adding uh, well, all of those stuff. <laughs> it's sick. Yeah. You know, it's just unbelievable. Yeah, you know what I mean? And I have a gospel album at home that never released that he brought to me. He yeah. played every it's single instrument true. on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Drums, keyboard, everything. You know? He toured worldwide, was didn't he? He went everywhere. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. living in Africa at one mm, point. Right, Gambia. Yeah, we started Gambia. living there Gambia. in Gambia? Uh, yeah, Gambia. 1994. Now, the thing that I was kind of very concerned about, he has an arsenal of songs, tons of songs, and I always worried about his publishing. 
because as China said, a lot of people came when China started grooming him and just took him and gone. And a lot of people was managing him and handling. And you know, he's an easygoing person, as China said. Mm -hmm. He just come and him just six So there are lots of songs out there. Lots of songs. Unaccounted for. Yes. And I don't think he was getting is just royal. So who's going to do this now? There's a family, I, I take it. Well, his what sister, about you know, I have been out of the picture for what about quite kids? a while. His own kids. Well, he has a few kids around. You know, he has quite a few kids. But in the last set of years, I'll tell you, the last year when he did Star Time, and I spoke to him at mass camp, and then four days later, I heard his leg was amputated. Yes. I was shocked. What caused that, by the way, real quick? He had something like a, a problem in one of the legs. I wonder you heard him use gangrene, mm -hmm. and it developed, and you know, because he just keep moving, moving, he never paid much attention, I understood. And then it, it went, and so to save the leg, they had to amputate, but his condition, has been getting worse because he was taking a lot of medication. Mm -hmm. I mean, when he's traveled, one suitcase full of medication. Right. He should have rested and, and get yes, recovered he, properly. Yeah, yeah, you see, what happened, he needed somebody around him through, throughout his career. But what about these movements. kids? They weren't, they weren't there for him? No, I don't know how to explain that part because it's that little kind of thing why I had to make my exit because I couldn't handle it. It was getting crazy. And a lot of times when he was in Jamaica, he was actually living at hotels and by piling up bills. How is the funeral arrangement coming out, coming around? We have seen it too often and it's right. very sad. Where great artists like, like Frankie mm -hmm. passed and there is a problem with finding money for burial. Is that so with, in this case? Well, I don't even know <clears throat> actually what is happening. I heard that there was a problem with the foot thing with even just getting a foot. So if mm. that is the thing, you can just imagine the next thing. Okay. But you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's really sad. You know, why is it it always work the way there? I do have no control over it, but I'll do anything in my power to make sure this is Well, it's the same talent. thing that I have, yeah. you know. Yeah. I looked at it now, mm. and because of my experience, and I saw what was happening leading up prior to his death. Mm -hmm. Money is piling up for medical bills and all that something. It, right now, I'm kind of worried and concerned what is going to happen. I see a lot of people and people calling to me, news media and say government must this and government must that. But let me look them straight in the eye. It cut out those foolishness. Yeah. Government yeah. has no obligation to take charge of any artist. Yeah. If they do that, they might as well take charge of the three million people, right? Mm -hmm. I have always preached to every artist I work with. Put your house in order, Before. right? When you're working and you're making the money, Insurance. Most of them do really do have insurance. I tell you, because I have tried to instill in a lot of them, but they don't listen. So when you give them the money, they don't go on their own. You know, and you can't run these people's personal life. Mm. So when I hear people talk about government must this and government that, that and this and that, no, there's no obligation from government to do anything for anybody if they chip in. I see Miss Grange for the past, I manage about four or five artists that have passed on, and Babsy Green has been an instrumental person in organizing and helping. I mean, I have to lift my hat to her. Definitely. You see what I mean? Yeah. Because she, every funeral, she's there yeah, at the head to come back and wash her. I don't even call people Last time that. I saw her, she was at Numbers. Yes. You know, she's oh. at everyone. Mm. Gregory, yeah. John. Yeah. And one other thing she preach all the time, put your house in order. Suppose I tell you something. Joe's Wheels, since John was passing, has already paid for his funeral, you know. <laughs> him have him, 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 him put so aside. I understand. Yeah, <laughs> because he said when the day well, comes, he don't want to go to an embarrassment of anything. So, you know, it's better people just come together. And I do have to ask a question. I think there may be a problem where everybody has to come together to try and give this musical icon oh, a good send-off. Because he deserves it. Sorry. First, um, we have to find the songs them that Frankie write, because he was really that writer. Yeah? Yes. He cover a lot of songs. Mm. I remember I was in France a couple of years ago, and some man told me, one of the songs them that we produced, uh, you know, is like them put it out in our movie. You know what I mean? I stay out of the word publishing because I never write that. You know what I mean? My brother writes some songs for him, but you know what I mean? But it's a trace all of these publishers that mm. have them thing. Yes. yes and because there must, must be money there. You know what I mean? And all these other producers that him have it song. Frankie never really have a it song for me, but him have some great record. Yeah, I'm yeah. willing to contribute anything out of that to support the whole thing. You understand? But, you know, 
Well, you know, well, 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 I think Sierra was, Sierra was a big tune. Yeah. And the John just stopped it. Oh, you name them. Mm -hmm. You understand? So it shouldn't be no problem. So, so we, the call is out then for those who know, yeah. who, who may know things about these, these things, about yeah, but, the I publishing mean, you know, and where it is and so yeah, on, right. to come forward. This right. is the time to step up. Nice. I see yeah. one thing a lot of artists don't realize, the PRS and all these things. Every entertainment place, whether it's a bar, a club, a restaurant, pays a fee to perform in right society where it is sent to artists. But if the artists them don't put themselves in line, register themselves and have somebody around them who's channeling all these things because you see your publishing is your pension. Yes. Uh, when they get old and casting again, you can sit down and collect, collect, but a lot of artists don't pay any attention to that. And that's where I was worried about with him because him don't sit down and really write song with pen. Him creating it in his head. You see? Mm -hmm. So they, they might not have been Copyrighted. Well, that's the part I'm worried about, which it may not, you know what I mean? And a lot, I don't know if the producers, them who worked with him, was cooling him on top of you know, where that is concerned, mm. you know, because oh, that wow. is very important. So and a, I try to explore every about, yeah. artist. If they don't understand publishing, so go, go talk to people like Gussie from, uh, you know, who runs a publishing company. Since Frankie passing, somebody published that they contacted the union and Java, and they were told that. He's not a member of either the two, so they can't do anything because he cannot come under their insurance. Oh. So when I saw that, you know, it made me start to even get worried. You know, that, like you, that you know, go, we might be facing something. But I think, and I appeal to the world Jamaica, whatever you can do, especially corporate Jamaica, when the dance team song all the while, do come in. And if you are needed to help and contribute, let us give Frankie Paul, Paul Blake, right? a good sender of because he deserves nothing but the best. Okay, so well said, Copeland Forbes. Thank you so so much, sir, for coming and sharing with us. Let's you know. Hallelujah. And uh, still to come right here on stage, why does DJ Nicholas's latest work question his faith? Introducing Abby Dallas. Wow. And uh, China K tells us what's on her mind. That's our friend from the Tri-State USA. All coming up right here on stage. We will back. Rifle bus, blink and boom and dead. Thanks for watching our video. If you're not yet a subscriber, click now and be on stage. Always.